hell is that? Go. Oh. Quit talking. I want your audio in the video. Okay, we're cleaning it up. We've got a four cylinder like homing. What model is this? Data plates on the bottom. I'll tell it to you later. But uh, we suspect the oil sump gasket has blown. You can see there is a trail of oil. It comes from the front. They got a good video of it yesterday of it leaking out right around there. So we're gonna clean this sucker up and get it in there and start taking the sump off. That is the current plan. Aki Hall. So we got us a IO360 that's leaking out of the oil pan. Be sure to label stuff to make your life easier. Okay, just got it off. This is exactly where the oil was pouring out of. From here to here, all the oil, and you can see it on there. So it looks like the gasket was torn when it went on. Cause that's been like that for a while. It's even got some ripples in it right here. And you can see the, right there, it was installed kind of like that. And probably hasn't been leaking up till now cause it had enough grape jelly on both sides of it to hold the seal until one day it was just not enough. Cause the amount of, the amount of warp in that, I know that you can see that gasket is not flat right there. That's not from removing it. That's like hardened that way from being inside the case and not pinched between them like it's supposed to be. So there you go. I don't even think you need to clean it. Just like, just stick it back on there. Well, I already have cleaned it. Well, let's get it dirty. The dirt will make the oil stay in better, right? Mm-hmm. Good deal. Mm -hmm. So this is the map that we made to keep up with what bolts go where. If it's got a stud, get the nut and the hardware for it. Just to kind of remember how things go, make notes like, hey, this one didn't have a nut on it. That one didn't have a bolt and it's supposed to. So may have to do it while it's leaking. It was leaking out of these two. And that was where the gasket was like super hard and was not in line like it was supposed to be. This is the uh, pre-buy. Pre-buy? This is the landing light. Connections. I just had it shoved in there? Bro. Hello, I'm an aircraft mechanic. Wow. So, got the bearing back here. We're starting on the bladders. It wants to take them out to see if they can just um, overhaul the bladders. The bladders that everyone commented that weren't leaking. Well, not everyone, just a few of those people. So I'll post more um, content later in the video about how much these bladders aren't leaking because you guys said they weren't leaking. Okay, so check this out. I was gonna cut the safety wire and I had a pair of dikes on there. I'm gonna stop just to show you. Watch that bolt. That's way too loose. All right, I can't really show this on camera. Caps off, hardware saved. Um, I gotta go in the fuel tank and like get stuff out. That's hooked up, but I'll show you that. Okay, so second. this chain hanging down, that's where my arm goes and the tank stops right there. So just for reference, like my arm's gotta go through this hole And I've got to be able to get all the way out to that, that, which is not possible because my arm is not gonna fit. Over here, we can see what's holding the tank in, which is one clamp. That's a 7 16 I know you're supposed to be able to get it with your fingers, but I usually throw a 7 16 at it just because I can't ever get my fingers on stuff like that. I don't even know if I can get my hand in that. Yep, just like this way. Okay, this is why it sucks to do fuel bladders on a Baron. Actually, I was able to get this one in my hand. So, hopefully we can push this joker out and call it a day. I'll be all cut up for this. Here we show. go, we got more blue on top. Um, 
if there's blue on top there's a gasket underneath and sure enough it's probably coming out of that gasket so that is a different tank than that one this one runs under the nacelle so just more evidence of leaky leakies maybe make a mark so you remember which way the fuel sending unit goes i think all the fuel was pouring out when it was full because they weren't tight enough on the tops oh yeah got it out that's my theory so i got two of the interconnect tubes out and i hate hate it i got one more well i'm bleeding Cool. This is the part of the job where you just channel all the frustration and anger you have about how you wind up in life as a GA mechanic and just rip and rip stuff out. Just rip it out. And then you cut your hands and then you want to go home early, but you can't because your wife doesn't want to come pick you up anymore. Okay, so the reason this one stinks so much is that's an interconnect tube. That's another interconnect tube. And then this one's got one on top. They're all a pain to get to because you have to get in there and pop them out. As far as leaks go, the bladder looks pretty solid it's got a couple places where it's kind of like dry rotted i'll come back fine i had one a minute ago then i lost it so we might run up replacing the bladder we'll talk about it with the customer and with the guys that fuels and floats but that right there is where it was leaking that seal is done for you can see it leaked there went over that cinder and then you have like the little blue crystals from the fuel where it's been leaking. So, there's your leak right there. These are probably, none of these are probably tight. And that's probably why it was leaking. Also a lot of rust on this from all the fuel vapors that should have not been leaking out of. One, two, there's two right there. Three, four hoses. One, two, three interconnects. Getting that one out was awful. I have no leverage and I have short arms. Manufactured November 1999. Were you born then? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's two years before me. Uh, I was uh, I was 10, running around doing stupid stuff. Now I'm here doing stupid. Stuff. So on the last leg, on the last bladder, we need to remove this right here from the firewall because that extends into the tank and goes to the pickup for the fuel pump so it's really hard to get to all that but we'll do we'll get there bro these bolts weren't tight at all which is probably where most of that leak came from just a little bit on the outside but most of it probably came on the inside of that firewall we'll confirm when we get this splatter out and look yes that's good so this is like the third bearing I think I'm done. This is a 56 TC, which has this tank, which I hate, but story time, I want to watch somebody pull the tank out without taking this cover off with a cherry picker. And this broke into two, two different pieces. So this is just a couple screws. Take that out. The whole bladder is gonna pull through this end. So it gonna pull through all under that. Now there is another access panel right there that you can undo. Um, we have somebody that looks like Gumby and has long arms. So luckily we didn't have to do that. So now we can pull it out and start redoing all the tape, which is gonna be longer than doing the bladders themselves. Gumby failed, there's more. There's more clips in there. There may or may not be a slight leak in this panel. Just a, the slightest leak. Um, and by slight, just a slight major one. No big deal. This is not, this is not what you want to see. Not what you want to see at all. That is appalling. And I'm sure that all the bolts are like that. Notice how loose the safety wire is. Yep, they're all loose. Oh my goodness, who does this? I clean that all up too, look at it. Oil everywhere. Go away, oil. Oh no, now it's coming out. I'm not the type to criticize other people's work because we all make mistakes in life. But I really hope the same two people didn't do that and that. That's like, the good safety wire should be kind of in between them two. Uh, that's banjo wire and that is nothing. 
but they probably torque these bolts because they don't look like they're leaking everywhere. My goodness gracious. I think I'm gonna go home today. I've been here an hour, I'm gonna go home early. So it begins. This is when it gets fun. You just kind of throw it over your shoulder so you don't have to tape up the wing. And this way you won't scratch the wing up. But we're getting there. So here's the one that none of the bolts were tied on. And then I do believe our other leak was coming from here because it's all in there. You can just see it. So now the biggest hurdle is going to be getting everything retaped, which should be fun. I'm pulling the tape out and I've come to a section that they just used regular duct tape on and it did not stick. I swear, people frustrate this. Uh, you know, people pull them off, they, you know, they're just doing it um, out because you gotta do an inspection somewhere and we say, okay, uh, they don't leak, but you're gonna run into problems putting them in. And sure enough, they, they have issues putting them in. So, I mean, you'd be swearing at me <laughs> because of it. <laughs> it. Yeah, I mean, it, it is what it uh, is. I got floats and fuel cells said no quote. They said they won't touch them. They won't do anything. So I'm just trying to figure out yeah, what options yeah. this guy has to get yeah. back in the air. Um, uh, who is the customer that you're working with? Long story short, ATS fuel bladders have a big problem with shrinking after they come out, even if you coat them with engine oil so they cannot overhaul these the good news is they do have a set that was returned to them by somebody else because they ordered a full set by mistake but did not need the right wing so we'll get them soon real today 